Good afternoon, everybody. Is this working? How you cut the How you cut the mic on? It's not working. Huh? Hello, y'all can hear me. All right, okay, I'm just gonna talk. Hello. All right. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Darian Downey. And I'm India Haynes. All right. We the and master we of the ceremony. The ceremony <laughs> for the class of 2018 graduation. Right. All right. So, could we have everybody uh, stay standing so Janae can sing the national anthem? <laughs> So proudly we held at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and broad stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallant streaming and the rockets were clear the bombs were singing air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh, oh say does that star spangled banner Yet wait for the land of the free <laughs> and home the brave. <laughs> As we begin our ceremony, we would like to welcome all parents, guardians, family, friends, and educators. Thank you all for supporting and helping us celebrate our success. All right, so now we'd like to welcome our president, Aaron Davis. He's coming up to do the, re uh, the reflection, so let's get it. Hello everyone. These last four years have been some of the best and worst years of my life. But I can say finally now that I've made it. I broke the statistic and I am graduating high school. Coming into freshman year, I was fed the idea that you just come to high school, you learn the basic science, math, and all that. But I learned that high school is more than this. These teachers are here to teach us life lessons, to get us through the future. They're here to teach us how to manage our emotions, and much more. So I want to give a special thank you to all the teachers here, because without you, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Coming into Mount Clemens High School in 2014 was probably one of the best years for this school. We were winning in all sports. And to keep it 100 with you guys, it all came crashing down sophomore year. It was probably the worst year this high school ever faced. We was at a low in numbers. Kids didn't really care about coming here. 
But sophomore year, a special person came to this school with no hesitation, Mr. Gibson, and he put in plans in order to help change the school and help fix the pride. And without Mr. Gibson, we wouldn't have the school we have today or the pride we have today. So I want to give a special thank you to Mr. Gibson and everything he's done. If you look down at your pamphlets and you see the color of the cords, Mr. Gibson has just had, had about a hand in every single one of them programs and helped start in every single one of them programs. He came to this school and he didn't talk down to the students or look down to the students. He worked with us, he understood where we were coming from, he understood our mindset, and him and us students in the student body put together a lot of programs to help better this school. He made it cool to be all smart and stuff, because that wasn't the mentality at school for a very long time. I want to give a special, a big, big shout out to our class sponsor, Ms. Lewis, who was like a mother to us this final year. Ms. Lewis is a, a scary lady, <laughs> but she was on our heads all these years. If we were falling behind in the class, she would walk you to class every day for that entire week, every hour, and walk you to the bus if she had to. And she didn't have to do that. Ms. Lewis is like our mother bird at this school. She taught us a lot. She sat us down. She had a lot of heart to hearts with us. She got our minds focused on college. She honed our skills. So Ms. Lewis, we can't thank you enough from me and the student body. We want to give you a special thank you. A wise man once said, without failure, there will be no success. And that man was Frederick Douglass. And to keep it 100 with all of you, we've all failed a lot. We've all fell down a lot. But the teachers here, they didn't just rush to help us up. They stood next to us and coached us while we picked ourselves up. And I want to thank them for that. No, pause. Wait, I have to keep going. This school has me proud to say, I'm proud I graduated from Mount Clemens High School, and I'm proud to be a bather. Thank you. Our next speaker is a talented artist, one of ABC's brightest and best recipients, graduating with a GPA of 3.88. Please welcome the class 2018 valedictorian, Janae Phelps. Shalom. Good afternoon. I'm Janae, and I'll be speaking to you today. Because as valedictorian, our school requires that we give a speech to a room with family members and parents and seniors. I didn't prepare for this, and I didn't prepare for this, and I see you're all excited, but there's a lot of thoughts going through my head. I'm really nervous about today. I mean, we're all about to graduate, and I don't want us to be the type of people that see each other in the store and just wave and then keep on pushing. I'm nervous for the world. I'm nervous for my future. And I don't want to be a failure because it's hard to explain to people how you got to the top and now you're living as a bum. But I'm excited for us. Some of us are heading to the armed forces, a trade school, or setting ourselves up to be a big money-making entrepreneur. And that's all the bomb digs, but please don't get beside yourselves. I want you all to build as successful, independent adults. So, as my dad would say, prioritize your needs. Let go of any animosity and forget all the negativity. And focus on you and your gifts and what you have to offer yourself. You are all you have right now, and you're on your own right now also. So do whatever makes you happy, but please don't lose your minds. I don't want to have to see y'all wanted posters or have to explain why I know a convicted felon. So be good, little angels. Insert smiley face. <laughs> Just be you, and 
have the faith that if you work hard, you can get what you want. That's it. All right, thank you, Janae. Now we're gonna have our salutatorian, Brianna Halley, come and give her speech. Good afternoon. Roger Button was born in Birmingham, Alabama, and was relocated with his family in Cincinnati, Ohio, in his first year of life. He attended a neighborhood public school during which he played football, basketball, and ran track. He was awarded the honor of second team all city in football in his senior year of high school. He went to Ohio University on a football and basketball scholarship. He played two years of football, after which he had to concentrate on his grades and graduate. While teaching and coaching, he furthered his education by earning a master's degree in comprehensive occupational and industrial education from the University of Michigan and the education specialist degree from Wayne State University. After graduation from Ohio University, he secured a job in the Lance Cruz school system. He also secured coaching jobs as JV football coach and JV basketball coach. He was the first black coach in Lance Cruz school district and probably the first black coach in the county. He also coached junior high track for a few years, he got involved with coaching lacrosse in the early 1970s and coached lacrosse until his retirement in 2005. In his teaching career, he taught general shop and math at Lance Cruz Junior High Central. He started the first photo club in the district there. He then transferred to Lance Cruz High School where he taught woodworking and drafting. When the district opened Lance Cruz High, North in 1976 was among an inaugurant staff. He taught drafting, wood shop, general shop, communication technology, photo photography, video production, and technology education in his career there. His students achieved awards at the local, county, state, and national levels. He sponsored several clubs while teaching in the Lance Cruz School District, among which were the Photography Club, Vocational and Industrial Clubs of America, and the Ebony and Ivory Club. Along with teaching, he also wrote grants for and ran two summer recreational programs. One program was located in Qu Quinn Row area of Clinton Township, and the other was located in the old Clemens School building in Clinton Township. He operated a successful portrait in wedding studio called Central Photography about 25 years until the year 1999. During his early years of teaching, he worked as a social worker with the Big Brothers Big Sisters of Macomb County part-time during the school year and full-time during the summers as a case manager. He, his greatest recognition of accomplishments has been in the field of coaching. He was recognized as the coach of the year by the Michigan Scholastic Lacrosse Association. He was elected in the Macomb County Athletic Directors Coaching Hall of Fame and the State of Michigan High School Coaches Hall of Fame. He recently ran for office of the Mount Clemens City Commissioner, and he is serving his second four-year term. He is dedicated to making the city of Mount Clemens a better place to live and raise children. He is the inaugural chairperson of the Mount Clemens Community Coalition of Youth and Families serving the city of Mount Clemens. He is a very active member of North Broadway Church of Christ here in Mount Clemens. That's all.
Good afternoon. I'm a little bit embarrassed because I wrote that that they could take some of those things and just say a few things, and uh, they read the whole thing. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, um, first I have a confession to make. About two days ago, I had a very sore throat. The devil was busy. And then yesterday, I had a really bad stomach ache to go with the headache. And this morning I woke up with a headache. And so, you know what? If I have to sit down early, you will be okay with that. But if I don't, I'm gonna go through what I have to present to you. To Teresa Davis, superintendent of schools, to Mr. Joe Gibson, principal, to Mrs. Lewis, and to the faculty and staff here at Mount Clemens High School. I thank you for all your work when you worked this 2018 graduating class to this day. I know you had to put in a lot of time, a lot of energy, uh, but we thank you for all that you did. I'm also very honored that your senior class officers asked me to speak at your commencement exercise. <clears throat> I have two grandsons gradu graduating from high school this year, and I, the things that I'm gonna say to you are things that I would probably say to them. And I promise not to keep you long, maybe about 10 minutes, because I know that your heart and mind is set on walking across the stage, getting that diploma, and celebrating with your family and friends. What I want to talk to you about is transitions in life. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I just want to take you back in time to when you made that first transition from comfort of your home to starting kindergarten. I'm sure that you were a little bit nervous and a little bit excited at the same time. When you got there, you didn't know many people, but soon you made friends and school became okay, maybe even a little fun. At the end of the school year, that transition ended, but another one was about to begin. The next year, when school started, you were less anxious and you met people much like you. You were not the big kids, but yet you were no longer the little ones. And as the years went by, soon you were the top dogs in the school. You were the big kids. The next transition was the end of elementary school and the start of middle school. You were a little bit nervous when that happened. You may have heard rumors that the big kids would stuff you in lockers or do other hazing events to, when you got to the middle school. After you arrived there, you found out that those rumors were mostly untrue. You made the transition from middle school to, you made the transition to middle school and it was very gracious and good transition. At the end of middle school, you made the transition to high school. Still, it was a little bit scary because there were those big seniors that seemed to control everything, and I'm sure that's what happened. You worked harder. Your classes were difficult. You had to go from room to room each hour, but you made that transition too. As the years went by, you reached your senior year. And once again, you were at the top dog. You were the big kids. You were in control. Now, you have completed that mandatory public school education. Now, it is time for your next stage in life. That being the transition from youth to young adults, you are transitioning into the rest of your life. 
the reoccurring theme here is that every time one phase of life ended, another one began. And so it is now. High school is over. I'm sure you are elated, extremely happy. No more getting up early in the morning to go to school. No more homework assignments. No more papers to write. No more athletic games to play or to go and attend. All of that is over. In the transition into young adulthood, you must decide what's next for me. Is it college, trade school, military, starter jobs, getting married and having a family? Whatever you do, you will no doubt have the same anticipation and anxiety that you had when you faced the uncertainty of kindergarten. You are entering uncharted waters. You can face it with fear and anxiety or with excitement and anticipation. But know ye this, you are a very special generation. Our country and the world is at a pivotal point and you will have a great deal to do with which way the country and the world goes. So I challenge you to change the world for the better. I'm sure the first thing that comes to your mind is, yeah, right. You know, what's he talking about? I don't have that kind of power. How can I change the world? Well, you do have more power than you think. As individuals, you have just a little power. You have the power to change your neighborhood, your community, and all the things around you that you live in. If a number of like-minded young people get together, you can change things. For example, after the tragic shooting in their high school, the students at Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, got together and started a campaign to improve the gun laws in their community and state. Their mo movement went national, or viral as you would put it. They were able to change some of the laws in that state that adults could not change. They also promised that they would continue to monitor the votes and actions of the public officials and react appropriately when they faced re-election. They have that power of the vote, and you do too. Whether you do something or you do nothing, you will have a profound effect on life in your neighborhood, in your city, in your county, in your state, and in your country. If you do nothing, you will allow others to dictate your quality of life. If you do get involved with a, a positive change, you will improve your life and the life of those around you. Even if you struggle and you are not successful at making the changes that you see need to be made, you just may be the inspiration that causes someone else to take up the banner and make those changes. I guess you probably asked this question, old man, why are you so insistent that we make a positive change? The answer is quite simple. The decisions that you make will have a determinant factor on my quality of life. I have had ups and downs in my life, but all things considered, my life has been pretty good. I want my final years to be pretty good as well. So your decisions will greatly affect my quality of life. And so I encourage you 
to make good, wise, intelligent decisions, to take good, wise, intelligent actions, and to adhere to good, wise, intelligent advice. Think on these things as you go forward into the next transition of your life. And with that being said, I both challenge and congratulate this awesome Mount Clemens High School class of 2018. Go forth and make your mark in this world. I thank you. Please let us prepare to receive the class of 2018. Good afternoon. Almost a century ago, Langston Hughes wrote these poetic words of appreciation from a mother to her disheartened son. Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time I've been a climbing and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps because you find it kind of hard. Don't you fall now. At this moment in your life, it doesn't matter what anyone has tried to do against you or the obstacles and the trauma that's been put in your path. They couldn't destroy you. You're still standing, you're still strong, and you always will be. Being a little anxious right now is both understandable and quite normal. But don't worry, as your class song brilliantly proclaims, you'll be all right. On behalf of the Mount Clemens Board of Education, Superintendent Davis, and the staff and students of Mount Clemens High School, I welcome all family and friends to this celebration. Thank you all for supporting this wonderful group of young people. So Mr. Rickman and the entire board of Mount Clemens, uh, the Mount Clemens Board of Education, I present for your acceptance in all their awesomeness, the Mount Clemens High School Class of 2018. Thank you, Principal Gibson. On behalf of the Mount Clemens Board of Education, I'm honored and privileged to stand before you this afternoon. I would be remiss if I didn't introduce my colleagues that serve on the Mount Clemens Board of Education. I'd like to introduce Dr. David McFadden, Vice President of the Board of Education. Ms. Janine Walker, Treasurer of the Board of Education. Mrs. Christina Escalante, Secretary of the Board of Education. Mr. Jason Monk, Trustee of Monk on the Board of Education. And Mr. Glenn Voorhees, Trustee of the Board of Education. To the talented faculty, thank you for your hard work and dedication in providing a quality education for these students that are seated here this afternoon. To the parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, cousins, boyfriends, girlfriends, extended family members, we give special thanks to you because these students would not be here this afternoon by themselves you play a very important role in their lives. Thank you for being there for these students. 
I would like every member of the graduating class of 2012 to stand up. Excuse me, yeah, thank you. Somebody is paying attention to the graduating class of 2018. Stand up. <laughs> I would like for you to repeat Earl's litany for success. I'll say a line, and then I'd like for you to repeat it back. I'll say it slowly, and it's not complicated. So here we go. I am a living, learning, problem-solving being because I think. I qualify if I'm willing to do the work. I qualify if I'm willing to do the work. Willing to listen. Willing to listen. Willing to learn. Willing to learn. And willing to change how I think. And willing to change how I think. I am perfect. I am perfect. My results are excellence. My results are excellence. But I still have room for improvement. But I still have room for improvement. Room for forgiveness. Room for, room for persistence and patience. And patience. Persistence, is persistence is valuable. My ability to persist in spite of setbacks and disappointments, and disappointments affirms my belief in myself. My in myself. Persistence, persistence is the iron quality of my character. Upon receiving my diploma this afternoon, my, diploma this afternoon my, life my life will never be the same. Never, never, never. never, never, never. I confirm my ability to control my destiny. My destiny is about respect and priority. I am committed to respecting myself, my family, my community, and my profession. My past was interesting. However, my future is pure excitement. My potential is located in my expectations. No, 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 no. I don't think you really believe what you just said. Let's say that again. My potential is located in my expectations. It pays to do good. It doesn't cost anything to think big. So think big. Real big. You never now be seated. By the powers vested in me by the state of Michigan, Superintendent Davis, Principal Gibson, I affirm these students have met all requirements for graduation. And on behalf of the Mount Clemens Board of Education, I accept and receive these students for graduation. Congratulations to the class of 2018. Let us prepare to pre receive our 2018 graduates. Please move your tassel from the right to the, wait, to the left. <laughs> Just kidding. It's okay. <laughs> to the right to the left. We will have our Fab Five come up. Now.
Janae Phelps. <laughs> Brianna Hadley. <laughs> Marcellus Cruz. Tyler Ingeman. <laughs> Kataria Weaver. Tyreek Bannock. Gabriella Beersley. Kevin Boyd. Janisha Burst. Kyle Clark. Shamaya Connor. <laughs> Chanel Craig Miles. <laughs> Maxwell Cruz. Aaron Davis. <laughs> Christopher Davis. <laughs> Darian Downing. Serena Greer. Tyrone Gregory. No, 
India Haynes. Jordan Hillier. Dakira Houston. Deja, Deja Inman. Jasper Jackson. Vincent Joseph. Eric Marshall Ross. <laughs> Marvin McKenney. Deontay Nelson. <laughs> Victoria Owens. <laughs> Kennedy Peoples. Levi Pet. <laughs> Josiah Royal. Danny Simmons. <laughs> Tennille Small Rogers. <laughs> Jarvius Stubbs. Amari Weathers. <laughs> Darvez Weaver. <laughs> Jason Williams. LaShawn Wright.
please remove your tassels from the right to the left. Yeah. to thank the parents for coming out, the teachers, how you doing? My mama. <laughs> we want to thank Ms. Simmons, Mr. Gibson, the school board, and the students. Have a nice day, everybody. We would like to ask all, everyone in the audience, to please remain seated until all of the graduates ex exit. Thank you. At this time, we would have the board members and the members of the staff to please exit first, and the graduates will follow as directed by Mr.